Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So, just bringing you up to speed with my beautiful Village Life by Susanna. So if you haven't got your panel yet, it's a pre-printed panel, head over to Susanna's website, our links are below. She will be able to send you one out in the mail and it's just a gorgeous little collection of little villages. She was inspired by some photos that she took while she was traveling in England which I think I attached to the second video from memory. I do have them on my phone, so let me just grab them up just to remind myself of what the inspiration was. They're so gorgeous because I finished the little blue one and that is the little cottage that she spotted and took a photo of. Absolutely gorgeous. And you'll see there's a bit of a curve to those windows. So I'm pretty, Pretty confident I got my curve there. It was tricky, but Susanna had some great lines there drawn, so it wasn't too hard sort of just to follow her lead and get in my window curvage. I then added a bit of texture to that roof. In that photo, you see all those little, little um, oh, I think they're called um, shingles. They um, give you that real textured look, and I thought, well, I'm not gonna stitch shingles. Susanna, I believe, did draw them there. Let me grab the second panel I've got. Yeah, see, I've covered mine, so I've sort of forgotten what it did look like. So you can easily stitch those in, and I thought, nah, I'm not going to do that. So I ended up getting some twine, had a bit left over from where I outlined that cottage there, and just, I'll show you what I did. If you decide to do a bit of a textured roof on any of them, because... Yeah, that could be done on that big building there. Like it certainly is a lovely finish. Is I outlined it first in the white to give me just a little bit of a shadow line that, that appears, like the painted surface. Then I just laid that down. Got some um, sewing machine cotton, just fine cotton in the same color and stitched it down. So I couched it down and then I did another row. The only trick I'd say is I did about three rows on that angle. Then I stopped and went to the center and laid a couple down in the center of the roof. I might change my cotton so you can see what I'm talking about because you'll be thinking, can't see it, Corinne. So I did one, two, three. Then I hopped up and went over to there and did a couple. Then I went over to the far side and did a couple and then slowly filled in the gaps. That's a bit of a trick you can do when you're doing satin stitch too. So that you keep your stitches all straight, you can sort of jump through the whole area and then backfill it in. It just helps you control your angles a little easier. So that's what I did there. I then found some tatting and cut this little piece out. And these are pretty common in our op shops here in Australia. That was sort of a mass produced little doily and it's got that tatting look. So I found a little scrolly bit. Where did I find it? Here, I think it was. Oh, I can't see it for looking now. Somewhere here. Ah, it was up on this top edge. That there, that little shape. I trimmed that off. I did have legs on it at first and I trimmed that off to sort of make it a little bit more defined. Then, what was the other thing? Oh, from this same piece, see the top edge of that little house? This I spotted in the corner. Let's see where I cut it out. See that there? That edge there and that, that's the corner that I just nibbled it out and that gave me the peak to the little house. So really look into your laces and your doilies and you'll be surprised what shapes that you can sort of pull out of things. And because they're made of so many knots, they don't come apart. So you can feel quite confident that you could cut into these scrappy bits and pull out little little morsels. See the edge of this, that there, that scallop is missing there. That's on the bottom of the windowsill. I just needed something and that just worked out perfectly. Two of those little scallops just fit that window bay. But um, yeah, so just hunt through your goodies and see what you can find to sort of build up your little houses. 
I could probably even do more to them, but I sort of feel like they're, they've got enough. You never know, I might find a scrap and come back to them and add something else. I showed you what I did with the ruched tree. Um, I've stitched the tree trunks there in place. I just used a bit of brown Appleton wool, that one, that one, and then I did quite a few stitches on this big guy on the side just to make it look a bit thicker. This little tree, I didn't end up putting a trunk on because I brought it forward a little bit. So it sort of looks like it's in front of the house. So it doesn't need a little trunk. Um, this fence, can't remember if I talked to you about that. It's been a, a week or so since I did the video. So I have a feeling that I haven't shown you this. I probably thought the idea through in the last video and that's it actually stitched a little that's as far as I've got but this is just um, technically I think it's four ply wool but I think it's thinner than that I found it at an op shop I think the label I've just spotted inside here actually let's see if we can get it out crochet cotton four ply there you go I've got four ply wool that is feels thicker than this so you just never can tell can you so that's the fence and that was just stitching down a section and then coming back with some DMC, a matching dark blue, and using that to stitch all those little bits down. And I just sort of wandered along the fence line with it. So that's some stitching I've yet to finish, but I can't wait any longer. I have to get into the flowers. I'm definitely making a pink cushion. I think in the last video I was humming and harring and I don't know, I just love it so much. I just pictured the whole panel done in it. And I was like, no, 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 stick with the original thought I had, which was the pink cushion. And I mentioned it to Susanna too, a little while back. And she's like, oh yes, yes, do the pink cushion. So I'll stay to the original idea and not get sidetracked. So the plan is eventually to cut it out into a rectangle and add some fabric to the back fill it full of probably walnut shells. I've never really used them and I've got a few bags that have been squirreling away as I see them, I pick one up because they're not cheap. They're sort of, I think I've got them here actually. I've been holding my frame for filming up with them. And there's about $15 here in Australia for 12 ounces. It comes from America and it's made by Yarn Tree. And the theory is, apparently, that you put your pins into your pin cushion and if this is inside, it sharpens your pins. So I've got three bags of it. I don't know if that'll be enough to fill it, but I know where I can get it. It seems to be in stock again. It was very rare through COVID. Everyone was making pin cushions, obviously, or some YouTuber suggested it and suddenly it was all sold out. But I did notice a few bags kicking around now, so I could get a fourth. Okay, now, flowers, let's talk flowers. The plan is to pinch the fence up into the air like a little pleat. And it's sitting really good now that I've actually embroidered this a little. And run a little tacking stitch in there so that it holds it is what I'm thinking. I can't do it yet because I haven't finished the fence, which probably would have been a bright idea. But now you can see I've got this gap. So if I get my marker, which is here, and just give myself a boundary, otherwise it'll get bigger than Ben-Hur and my flowers will be all squished. So I've just marked myself a little line that's my point of placement from the bottom of that house down to the black line. Any more and they'll be climbing up the back of the fence, which is not a good look, unless it's a vine, of course. All right, we have our boundary. So I can pull that back down. That's it. So I'm going to meander across that space and let's measure it. Just in case you have the panel in front of you. If you're an Aussie, it's two centimeters. If you're everywhere else in the world, it is a quarter of an inch, is about the distance of which you can decorate in. Okay. Now, the next big decision was the fabric. 
Now, color palette, I want to stay within. I went hunting in the stash and I found this pack of fabric called Delightful. We believe it's a motor, but there's no salvage. There's no other information other than that little sticker that the fabric shop had on it. And I was looking through it and I'm thinking, that is so familiar. I've used that before. So then I went hunting further and it looks like I have been gathering bigger pieces of it for some time, not realizing that I had this layer cake already in my stash. So there's actually quite a range. The mustard flowers, the gray flowers, and then they've got it on a green background. And then there's a pile of green, it's just gorgeous. So I'm wondering if maybe there's a little salvage that gives us a bit more information, but I'm gonna say it's a motor. Here we go, here's a cell. See, I have been nibbling. Look at this. The girl's been here before. Those flowers, aren't they cute? They could be used. So I'm thinking this is my fabric range. I just would love to give you guys a little bit more information. And that, like usual, I never get the salvage. I pop it into the cupboard, I forget. But once I start, here we go. Oh, I would never have guessed that. Buttercup Blooms by, is it Moda? Is it Moda? Doesn't say, we don't have it. Okay, Buttercup Blooms. I'm sorry guys, that's the best I got. I reckon it is Moda. It feels like they're fabrics. They've got like a bit of a slippery feel to them, if that's the way to describe fabric. So, that's my color palette and I'm hunting out blue flowers. I'm not going to bring mustard in. I'm going to be very strong, very focused and I'm going to try and keep it in the tones that we already have. This pack, there's a panel of fabric here that caught my eye. I thought that was interesting so we might just grab that guy out and on the back here, this one. I reckon they are pretty close. The only thing I'll say about that fabric, it just seems a shame to cut one blue flower out of that beautiful stripe. So I'm thinking I'm gonna leave that because when I was ratting around in the stash, I found my good old Tilda. I've used this so many times. That popped up on the Jessie Chorley panel, the garden where I did the hydrangea in purples. I've used this blue somewhere, can't remember. It's everywhere. It's just the gift that keeps giving. So I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna cut out some of those. So let me put this fabric out of the way. And I would like to see a couple big feature flowers. So the one that caught my eye was this gray flower. And I've already been snipping in here, so I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna fussy cut out so I like that leaf too. I wonder if I could build that into it. Or maybe we get some ribbons and stitch the leaf in. I don't know. Who knows where this is going to go. In my mind, I just see a, a beautiful rambling English garden. So I think I need like lots of little elements that build up to a hang of a mess. So... I'm going to start with some feature plants, which is the big flower. Might only need three, maybe four. Pin them in and then build down in size from there. Now they're going to be roughly stitched down. I'm going to try and make it quite three dimensional by flicking that fence up in the air like I am. I think I need the garden sort of to look like we're down the hill looking up to the little houses because this flower is twice the size of the houses. Like proportionate wise, we're breaking all the rules. But if we can make them stand and feel loose and fluffy, I think we'll pull it off. So we'll give it a go. So there's our first flower. Got a crease in him he's not going to sit real well so now we only have a little bit of space so we're gonna to have to 
fiddle a bit here, I think it'll work right. If we get that into there, so you look over the fence and there he is. See how he's bigger than the house, bigger than the door? I'm not concerned because this is a floral treatment nestled in another concept. Like it's all the rules are being broken here. I bet you they're all looking at the screen going, Corinne, that flower's bigger than the front door. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm sure all the artists out there are cacking themselves, laughing, going, she's a little crazy kid, this one. Let's have a look at this. I reckon this has got potential too. Let's get this little rose out. Here we go. Chop, chop. Out we go. Fussy cut him out. And then we'll just go down in size from there. And I think this little tilde fabric will be just the bit. And I don't want to be all blue. We need other things. So we might even freestyle a few weird little round, blobby, fabricy, beigey things in there and pop some French knots and some beads and just sort of see there, he's going to work. There's that little guy. Then we cut out some of these little guys. So you can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to meander across the front of this village, popping down with a stitch or two or a bead and some little tilde flowers. So I guess the rule of thumb is big ones first, next size down, next size down and build yourself up a little pile of flowers. So a good little, good little project in front of the ca um, camera, goodness me, the TV. Take your fussy cutting into the TV the night before you do this and get yourself a little pile of flowers. And then when you sit down like I am now, you've got lots of them at your fingertips. Of course, I'm not that pre-prepared. As long as I knew roughly the fabric that I was going to use, I was just like, quick, turn the camera on. We just got to go, go, go. Oh, I just spotted another piece of fabric. Here's a scrap. He'll work. This is from the fabric I used in my Christmas Roxy Creations Christmas stitchery. Don't ask me the name of the fabric range. Oh, Holly. Oh, Holly Days. Holly. That's that fabric. Is it written here? Hollywood by Three Sisters. There you go. That's that fabric. See, he's a beauty. He matches the door. There's three here, so we're going to use them. Let's grab them and then that little piece is probably given me most of itself to me. The more shapes, I think, the better it will look. Now, being that I've only got three, probably should save for some for further along the fence line. Now the other thing, before I get too carried away with just cutting flowers out, is I need some fabric. Let me just lean over into my box of stuff. I'm looking for some plain fabrics that we could use to create some little extra. That's a linen, but it's a very white. This one is a great colour, but it frays. Maybe we just use good old calico. It's such a great colour. I think we do. So all I'm going to do is cut a little circle, just roughly. Don't overthink it. I haven't got time to be thinking. I'll keep that scrap out. And that little guy is a potential flower that can just nestle in there and have a bead put in him. So let's cut another couple of those. So you get the general gist. I'm sort of skipping along the front of all these houses, placing down random little flowers. And that's before I get my ribbons out and do one of those beloved little ruffled roses that I've fallen in love with. They're appearing everywhere. You learn a new trick and that's it. You'll see the 
they'll go through history and they'll look at my work <laughs> and they'll say, that's the era she learnt ruffled roses <laughs> because they're on everything. Crazy girl. There we go. There's another little cream one and you just start just leaning them into each other. So we definitely want that. What else could we add? Oh, I know. Why don't we have a play with some organza and netting? Just leaning into the old bridal section. Let's just cut ourselves off a bit of netting. This is a veil. Just get a bit of that. Put it away before it becomes bigger than Ben Hurt. And we could probably do with something sheer. What about, I'm just rummaging behind me, guys. Hold the phone. Here we go. There we go. We've got some of this, this stuff. See, now it's 10 metres of fabric that I don't need. So let's just chop a bit off. It's got a shimmer. I like this. The afternoon light's just starting to sneak into my room here, guys. So I hope it's not too much of a shadow. So we've got a little bit of um, chiffon. That's the word I was trying to say. A little bit of netting. So maybe if we do what we did before. See, look at the light. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Sorry, guys. There's a hang of a shadow. Look at that. Oh, well. I'm sure you're used to me, you know doing this to you. I usually film in the morning because I'm at my best in the morning but I was just busy and then I was like the day is just about done and I haven't had a chance to sit down and film and I was fiddling around with the houses so the, the day just went so quick. So I'm cutting out a rough rough circle in the chiffon and now the netting and what I'm thinking we can do, oh, I've got an idea. Gosh, now I'm going to be rummaging for beads. Oh, this girl, she's... <laughs> There's my little calico circle. I'm going to put it under that. And I'm going to just put a pin in that for a moment because it's slippery. And I might grab... A needle and thread so there you go they're all layered there's the three layers there that sun is getting worse I'm gonna just jump up guys I'm gonna try pulling a curtain across it sometimes works sometimes it doesn't so I might just pause the video and I'll be back in a second okay, I'm back guys that's a little bit better it's a little bit more of a diffused light if we were to be professional in speaking Okay, where were we? We've got our layers of three fabrics here, so I need to secure them. So, a couple options. We could stitch it with cotton first and just make them up in their entirety. You know who we need. We need Reginald. Where are you, son? Come on, Reg. Oh, where is he? Hmm. Reg. Maybe he's on top of the duck. It's quite possible. Yep, there he is. Look, there's Reg. Come on, son. Okay. We've got Reggie. We're going to thread up with some sewing machine cotton. And I'm just going to secure the three layers together. I haven't made flowers like this for ages. They're really cute. Especially when you can get a few layers in there of different things. A shimmery one, a flat one, and a net. So now they're connected. So if you don't want to do the whole bead thing, you could end that off now. And you've, he's ready to place when you're ready to build your garden. So you could make a heap of those. But what I might do is I'm going to put a bead into the center now. So we could use these little calico bead coloured ones. I think these will do the trick. Just pick one of them up and stitch it in. And it's ready to go then. So it's like create yourself a heap of little elements. Now you could 
build it as you go, but you might find you find it quite laborious sitting there flipping from flower to flower. So my suggestion would be to pre-create them. You might find you come up with some other little combinations. I've just had an idea pop into my brain about using maybe some crocheted little bit. So I'm just going to end this off so that flower is finished and just ready to find its home in the garden. There's a tray, we need a little tray. That's rattling in there. Okay, so a little flower into the tray and you know, you might make 20 of them. We'd need at least, at least that. We'll put another idea together, I think. Where's Reg? Put a knot in Reggie's tail. So I might just lean over here and grab a random piece of crochet, cotton, uh, crochet edge off a doily. Is there anything there? Not really. Let's grab my lace bucket. It's funny, I was reading some of your comments and it's like you see my lace bucket here so much that you actually, oh, there's my phone ringing. And I thought I turned it off. It's on silence now. Sorry, guys. I definitely turned it off, but anyway. It looks like it's a marketing call too. You know those scam marketers? That's the number I think's popped up. So here's a little piece of lace with little flowers and there's three. That's gonna be perfect. Okay, I'm just going to fussy cut out that tiny little daisy. And then I might stitch it into the center. Where has he gone? He's fallen off. I'm gonna stitch him into there, like so. So once again, just creating just little textured little bits of floral. You could even put a bead in the center of this. Let's have a look at the beads. I did grab the champagne gold ones they might be oh yeah there are some little round ones in there might pop one of those guys in the center of this little fellow it's fiddly but i think it'll be worth it and there goes the bead right through the center That'll just put a little bit of sparkle through the garden. I haven't put beads on the houses yet. I can't decide. I'm really tempted to bead this tree over here. I saw the whole tree, I just felt like that was a Christmas tree in this village covered in snow. And I sort of felt like beading it, but I haven't done it yet because I love how matte the houses are. So whether the beads in the garden will be enough of a interest point and I won't need to go back through the tree, I don't know. Stay tuned. I think I'll do this garden next and then consider the piece after that. So let me just knot that off. Gosh, I wish I didn't have this light for you. I should have been more organized and did my video this morning, but it's all good. So there is another little flower and it's got that little piece of lace in the center. So pop him in our tray. What other little flowers can we create? Maybe just a flower with a nice French knot in the center, that little piece of calico. So for video purposes, I might thread up again and we'll do a French knot but you could easily do that straight into the piece but we'll just show you 
could do a colonial knot. They're probably not big enough. They might get a bit lost, a little colonial knot. So you might need to do a French knot where you can get a couple wraps. Gosh, you could even do bullion knots. You could place that piece down and then do a bullion knot so it's got like a little stamen or even a, a pistol stitch. Oh, gosh. You could do anything. So let's get another little embellished flower. Might be a bit tricky not having it on the fabric, but anyway. I'm going to wrap it three times around the needle. Go back down. And now we've got a little knot sitting in the center of our little calico piece. So let me just knot that off and finish it. There we go. So, of course, like I was just saying, if you don't want to do this prior, you could do it just straight onto your piece. Let me zoom in now and let's do a little bit of construction. Gosh, that light's right now I'm just thinking I might I like this net I might just cut a rough leaf shape out because I like how that's gonna just soften everything so I'm gonna have that little bit of net peeking out there then I'll bring the next flower in. Then we go to our little box of flowers and just start layering them in. There's some little ones. See how you start thickening it all up? Just get them slightly leaning on each other. It's meant to be a rambling garden. Let me get a bit of shade there. See that? Just layers and layers of them. And then go back through with your needle and just put a little stitch in each one of them to hold them. So let's do that without knocking everything flying. I'm gonna leave them sit there and attempt to do it. It's not gonna work. We need some pins, guys. Let's just catch them. And remember that line that I drew, I've already gone past it. See, I knew I wouldn't be able to contain myself. Let's bring him up and try and stay in that black line. Otherwise they will be lost behind the fence too much. Just pin it, just a rough, that's it. We've got our beautiful big statement piece. Yeah, I might grab my little applique pins. They're just a lot smaller. They're fiddly on my fingers to grab them. Come on, open. I think there's sticky tape on it. That would make it easier to open it. I do have one open here to the side as well. Okay. So if you don't have these, they're probably worth the investment. They're just tiny. But if you've got, you know, dexterity problems with picking things up with your little fingers, probably don't bother. Some days I seem to find them really good to use. Other days I curse them because they're probably a little bit, bit fiddly. Okay, so I'm going to creep up onto the house a little bit. We've got a, a garden that's overgrown here. That's good. That's holding them. They definitely are better pins. Let's get him into place, get rid of that big one. So I've recently trimmed my nails, so I don't even have fingernails to sort of help me here. So he's picking them up. Got no fingernails at the moment. Let's pop that guy up into there. That's the little tilde flowers. So see how we've created Get a bit of a cluster. So what I'll do is I'll try my darndest to stay at the above that black line. 
but I, I think I will sort of meander a little bit. But as that fence kicks up, I think it'll work. It won't hurt to have, you know, a little bit of thickness down into that crease. And as you look into the pin cushion, you'll see that. So let's put those pins away. Where's Reggie got to? Reginald. <laughs> that nasty little... No, that's... Reg. Here he is. Oh, you guys can't see that, but he was further down on the mat. Okay, so we've got a knot. Let's spin that fabric around. I always like to work towards myself too, so I'm often do a piece like this and then stitch it back to myself. So all I'm going to do is just a couple itty bitty stitches in the center. I want the rough edges. I'm not going to go around and fiddle with them in the way of stitching them all down. I'm not going to add glue. I'm just going to deal with the frayed edges that will come in time as I use the pin cushion. But I'm hoping that because they're nestled into this little gully behind the fence, there's a flower, a wayward flower there. Let's chuck him out. I think they'll be protected because the pins are going up into the houses. So I think it'll work. It's tricky when you're reinventing something new and you're just not sure if it's going to work. I feel like we've been thinking like an engineer, thinking like an architect. Now I'm a landscape gardener. <laughs> Who knows how this garden will work, but I think it will. Let's get a stitch up into there. Once they're secure, you can then come back through and really play. So I might actually go then and find a ribbon and do my ruffled rose. So let's just stitch that one down. Let's dodge up there and grab that little guy. And if you feel like you need to do, you know, more stitches, go for it. You don't, don't move on to the next flower until you feel like it's sitting nicely. I might even come up there and go through the bead in that flower so that it's really secured. Now that big flower, I'm really tempted to do something a bit embroiderish in there. Like we could do some short and long stitches. We could do some French knots. I might even find an olive thread to go into the center. I don't want to go crazy with other colors, but trying to keep my palette to these browns and blues. That's why when I saw that fabric here, oh, I just love that. And see the mustard flowers? I nearly cut into them too. And I was like, no, don't do it. It's bringing more colors in. I think it'll look better just staying to the original idea and not going down another rabbit hole which is so hard to do I think too when that fence stands up if there's a bit of bulk there it wouldn't be too hard just to snip that petal off there if that was in the way so I think I think it'll work all right Reginald's throwing his thread that's because I took my attention away from him and picked up fabric. So he's chucked a little tanty. Okay. Come on, Reg. Reg, thread the needle. Got him. Let's end that off because I think Reg has had enough. We'll put him away. Some of you are funny. Your husbands must be watching YouTube videos with you. You're stitching and the hubbies are sitting there being made to listen to we YouTube ladies, especially the Aussie girls. And um, one of you said, oh, my husband, he was just like, who is Reg? He's looked at the screen going, what's, who's Reg? 
and you had to explain it was the needle. Okay, Matt, we just must sound silly. Silly, silly. All right, I'm gonna take all these needles out now and everything's secure. Look at that, isn't that great? Just sitting there beautifully. That's gonna be really good. So what was I gonna do? I was gonna get my ribbon and we'll drop a, a ruffle rose in. Yeah, or do we? Yeah, what, what the hang? I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back. I'm just gonna go dig out my ribbons. I'm sure I've got some creams and whites and we might just have a little play with that. All right, guys, won't be back. I will be back in a second. Bye. Hey, I'm back and I found a really pretty cream ribbon. It sort of matches that seam binding. So I'm going to have a play with this next. Now I need a chenille needle that has a nice big eye. This one should do the trick. And we'll see what we can do with some ribbon. So let's do that little tricky knot to hold it onto the needle. Then we're going to do that so that we get a loose, loose knot at the end. Okay, so I'm thinking, gosh, I've got so much stuff around here at the moment. I can barely move. I think I'm going to do some French knots into a uh, colonial knot. French knot might be too much, so let's do a colonial knot into the center of that flower. We'll start building up a little bit of a, I don't know, an interesting center there. So let's pop a couple of these in. So let me get it into camera, you guys can see. Pick up the ribbon. Down we go. Maybe three little. Then we might pop some beads in there as well. We could even use some of our crocheting cotton in there. It's just all about embellishing embellishing the I'm gonna pop I've got a French knot already in that flower that I did before but I'm gonna scoot over there and put one of these in there I just think it might look a little bit fancier instead of that French knot it's just disappeared a little bit I think the the thread was similar color to the calico and I just now that I've got it into position it just hasn't jumped out at me so what else can we do let's go up here and maybe do a ruffle rose so i did a colonial knot first and then i just zigzag down the needle and then pull it all through and we've just placed ourselves a little ruffle rose in there. Let's come over here. Let's do another ruffle rose against that door frame. I hope you guys can sort of see it. It's sort of just the lights really messing with me today. So colonial knot first because that holds the center of the rose down. I know after I was taught them, I wasn't doing that, but they weren't falling to bits. It was still working. And then I realized I'd missed that first little step. So the colonial knot sort of brings it all down into position. There we go. So I might leave it at that. So we've got a couple little ruffle roses. I'm just going to 
end off the ribbon. We'll save that for later in the project. Might leave it attached to that needle. Uh, like we're barely going to get something out of it. Pop that in my little tray with that little flower that was just roaming around then. Okay, so let's have a look at the center. I'm thinking we pop a few little beads in there. You might have to grab Reg again. Maybe if you get to, there he is. Get a little bit more cotton on Reg. We'll keep building up this little flower here. So you could do some turkey work where you do loops, not knotting them as you go, and then you snip the loops open so you get all these fluffy little little um, threads. Makes great, great little detail in the center of flowers. What I might do too is dig out some blues and greys and I might just put in a few little stitches out from the center there like it's just I think it'd be a lovely little detail get a few little strokes of thread in there as well so let's get a bead or two in to the center of that flower now if you're new to beading try and do two stitches between with every bead it just means that if that cotton ever failed on me there's a chance that you wouldn't lose your bead it's probably more of a rule for when you're beading wedding dresses and things i remember my grandmother sort of saying it because you know the arm of the bride would be brushing up against the side of her bodice and if it was heavily beaded especially if she was a, a bride of the 80s um, that potentially might fall apart so I was always taught two stitches in every bead it does anchor them really well they can be swinging around a little bit with one and as soon as you put that second stitch in they're exactly where you want them so the little ruffle flat roses they look really good we've got the colonial knots in the center and then a ruffle rose ruffle rose little one over there as we went along I could even probably dig out some pale blue. Like you can really go to town here. Like this is a great little space to meander along and slowly build your garden. Imagine the whole panel done like this. If we weren't taking this off, you could do this treatment of flowers meandering through the entire village. It'd just be stunning. That's why I couldn't decide if I was going to cut this off. I just, I can picture this piece done. And I just think it'd be spectacular. With all these floral little treatments. That Reggie's throwing his thread. So we're just going to knot it off without him. Shut those beads before they go everywhere. I'm just threading Reg again. Because I just want one more knot. Those beads aren't going anywhere. Now the other thing we could do is coming out of our cluster of flowers, I'll just put that ribbon in my little basket so I can use it again. And that, now I might just come up a little bit so you can get more of a view Let's just check this fence. If that fence comes up and is stitched, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna look like you're peeking over the fence and you're seeing all these flowers, but I must stay above that black line. Gorgeous. Yeah. Maybe I don't make the fence stand as upright if I back it back a little bit, 
yeah if I put a piece of fabric under this right under it I could then stitch that fence where I want it and it could literally have a bit of air in there and not be so tight if I stitch across the front of the fence and I stitch just in behind there then my flowers won't be as cramped that's what I'll do I might end up making a internal sock for the for the um, walnut shell We'll see, we'll get to that. I still can't get out of my mind. This is a beautiful big panel. Like, gosh, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, what was I gonna do next? Oh, I know. I thought about potentially doing, just to add interest to it, some little pistol stitches, like little twigs going up I cut a piece of cotton and I've got one already on my needle so we'll use that first just coming up out of it I think it'd soften it and it's the same theory getting down to the smaller details of your cluster so we'll come up I might zoom in again so you can see what I'm thinking because I haven't yet stitched the grass that's on the side of that trunk so there's an opportunity there. I did paint it with the white pen just to push the black back a bit. But I'm thinking some little pistol stitches coming up out of the cluster. Like it's such a small little detail, but I think if you're doing a pin cushion, it's going to be in front of you all the time. Take the time to add these little bits because once it's done and it's made up and you're looking at it then for years and you had the thought and you didn't, you will regret it. So take the time to maybe embroider a few extra special little details. Oh, good on your bandit. He has to chime into every video. I swear. Oh, I can hear all the dogs in the street. Here we go. There's someone coming down the street. I could hear him in the distance. And that one wolf must have been. Yes, I heard the message. Aren't dogs smart? I can hear them all woofing kilometers away. Very clever. There we go, there's a few little pistol stitches. Yes, Bandit, we know. He's now come back to tell me. He's standing at my window, looking, he's in the, <laughs> he's looking through the window going, Mum, did you hear that? There's some walkers coming. There we go. See the little stitches? Just a few little, little soft touches. You could spend hours. Oh, now. Now Pepper's in on the story. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Welcome to my channel. You get everything. You get the news of the street from Bandit. <laughs> then Pepper joins in to say, yep, you're right, Bandit. There is someone coming down the street. I can hear the um, Poodle Cross Labrador next door, and they've got a little puppy still very young. So he's woofing. Well, he's sort of not sure what's really happening. There we go. I like that. See, so, yeah, just little details. You could get some grey threads, some little blue threads. You could put little daisies popping up. Yeah, really, really cute. I might see, we've got a little bit of time, not much. I'm going to grab my cottons and have a look. It doesn't matter if we go over time, does it? Once you start stitching. Yes, Bandit, I know. I'm just going to grab my cottons in the grey department and just see. I sort of feel like it could maybe some of these dove grey colours. And do, you know, some of these little stitches in there. I think that would be really pretty. I might need a blue as well just to define that I was there. 
There's nothing worse than stitching something and then you stop and finish, you know, look back at it and you can barely see what you did because your colors have toned too much. It's very disappointing. Okay, let's just pop a few little stitches in there. Now remember the fence comes up, so we probably only need to focus on the top portion and just drop some few random little little whiskers up there. Just adds that little bit of and you could really do this to all of them if you wanted. All the flowers could have a little detail in them. Thanks guys, yes, I know. They got a message from the poodle from the Labrador. They've now sent it on to the rock wheeler. Everybody knows. There we go. Just a few. Just adds that little random. We are clicking along on the time. I might see if I grab that blue that I used to stitch the fence down because I feel like we could handle a few pistol stitches in the center of that flower. Let's put the gray in my little, this is a wonder fill thread from memory and it's called Storm. If anyone was interested in the little gray, and I'm thinking of doing, where's my needle gone now? There it is. Let's thread up this blue. I'm sure I've clicked over the hour. I can't really tell because I've done three videos in a row which I'll join so if you've had enough of me I understand you can head off to the washing machine and do a load of washing now but if you're still with me thank you all right see the little stitches I just did in the gray let's pop a few little blue ones in there and we'll do a pistol stitch so we get that little knot. Let's make them a bit bigger, a bit too small. There we go. I think too, once you do the first, say, inch to two inches, you'll work out your little rhythm and then away you go. And I think it'll be just a case of, you know, stitch it all down. Okay, let's get this little stitch into position. Yeah, that's really given it just, just a little extra. Like probably no one will ever notice it. You'll have someone go, oh gee, I like your pin cushion. And they'll glance at it for a split second and they won't see the three hours of French knots that you've put into it. But that's typical, typical embroidery. Here we go. See those three little stamens there just sort of gives it a bit of detail you could even then bring a few up the side of the house again and start building up this wispy background and that's before I do something in this flower something needs to go in the center of that little guy then we've still got this little guy there's three flowers there alone and you could even come back through and where I did that ribbon not there you could do some little stamens off that I really like that three-dimensional one there with the tulle and the organza, not organza, um, chiffon. See the three-layer guy there? That's really pretty. I think I'll do definitely more of those. Little lacy one there. There we go. All right, guys, I, that, I'm sure we've done the hour. Positive. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not sure when the next video will pop up because there's a lot of work to do. I'll just um, do a little bit at a time and the next video I think will be more about the construction of it. And I think that little fence on the angle is gonna look so sweet. Let me zoom up so we get a full view. So we could even consider, here's another idea. We could consider little paths. Like we could stitch in there. Oh, I know what we could do. 
We could do some pebbles. Hang on, hold the phone. No one leave the desk. I have, I have these, which I've never, they're stone chip beads. I'm sure I've got some other colors. Some of these, I just think I picked them up at Spotlight. Yeah, it's got Spotlight's name on it. Some of those might be just the right color tone to do little pebbly paths. Oh my goodness, there's another rabbit hole. Yep, we could do heaps. You could do satin stitch to make it look like little stepping stones down through the garden. But I, I'd probably keep the stones as small as you can so they were part of the house. And then this huge overgrown forest of flowers. Yeah, I would make, if you're going to do tracks out of the doors, keep them to the proportions of your house. The flowers is what's overgrown. I think that's what I'd do. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave you alone now. Enjoy your day. I hope you managed to get your hands on one of these gorgeous panels and you're having a play. And let me know in the comments what colour scheme you did. Did you do my sort of colour scheme or did you do one of Susanna's because she's showing some examples that came out of the retreat. It was oh, it's really great ideas. So oh, have you seen the yellow and black one that is themed to um, Alice in Wonderland? Oh, gosh, you can do so much. I've got Christmas in my head and I'm thinking maybe I need to do one that is a little bit more Christmassy. I don't know. Could even do the chapel. Oh, I'm going down a rabbit hole now. All right, stop. That's it. I'm saying goodbye, guys. All right, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day. Bye.